Today we have three Apple DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. All right, I'm going to start off with this little apple ornament. This was a, I believe, from Target. This was also thrifted and it came from Dollar General. And then this came from Target, I believe, as well, originally. I got these all at the thrift store. This is a dry erase sign. You can use either sign, either side of that sign if you want to. Of course, we're gonna start by taking the tag off. We're gonna take off the hanger and then any tags that you have, you can go ahead and remove those. Then decide how you wanna put this on this paper. This is a great little back to school project that I think would be cute for a teacher. And I'm gonna show you a lot of options, so be sure you keep watching. I'm gonna take some of this red twine and just go ahead and cut it and get it ready. And then I don't need these long strings hanging down, but I do need a little bit of string in the front, so I'm just going to glue them down. And then because I don't want this sign, this writing that's already on there to show, it's a little sarcastic probably for, for actually having it at school if you're a teacher. Just gonna trace some construction paper or some uh, poster board, which is what I have, and I'm just gonna trim it down. I just have a small paper trimmer here. Cut it down to the right size, trim off these pieces of cord, and then I'm going to use some hot glue to put this down on here and cover it up. There is going to be some gapping from the bulk on the top, but you'll see later on that I will fix that. Not a problem. You could also use maybe some blackboard, I think it's uh, paper, like self-sticking paper. You could use that too. All right, so I've just threaded this through the hole where the original um, hanger was. And I'm going to make a few knots so this will not slip off. And I actually, it looks like I have three knots there. I used to have the hardest time trying to get the knots to pile on top of each other. I would have like a knot and then I couldn't get close enough to it. And later on down the piece of jute, I would have another knot, but I finally figured it out. So we're going to make this a little bit easier so that it doesn't fr <clears throat> excuse me, fray. We're going to go ahead and twist that with a little hot glue. It's going to make almost like a little glue needle on there. You can thread it right through your beads. These are some thrifted beads that came on a garland that I got at um, Goodwill, obviously. And I'm just going to use these on the top of my apple ornament. And we will be attaching this to that little piece of hanger that we had left on there. So I'm going to get that in the right placement, tie a few knots, cut it off, and then to keep this from moving around and being distracting, I'm gonna pull it down, put a little hot glue on there, and just place it down in the middle. Now I'm going to use this sign as a pretty much a holder. So I'm just gonna put the hot glue on there, get and place this on the top, try to get it where it looks like it's in the middle. Some of these can be wobbly, but you can just pull them out of the bottom and just use a little hot glue and stick in there. You can get things similar to this signs with the stand um, at Dollar Tree. So you can definitely do that if you don't have anything at home of, on, you know, that maybe you thrifted. I think the ones that have the, the faux stone, I think it's like an agate or something um, at Dollar Tree. I've seen those and you can use the stand for that. So I'm just going to take a length of ribbon here. I think I have about 14 inches of ribbon and this is just a thrifty piece of gingham. I dovetail the ends. I'm gonna push it, squish it up in the middle. And then make sure that I have my bow looking good. And 
take another piece of that red and tie it around the middle. You can use any color you like based on anything that you have. If you don't have a little apple sign uh, ornament, then you can use a different ornament and then you make your ribbon coordinate with whatever ornament you decide to use. But I thought this would be really cute on a teacher's desk at school. So this is going to be tied at the base of that paper, the little sign. Just going to tie it on there with a few knots. And then I will secure that later with a little hot glue. Trim off what we don't need so it'll be nice and neat. And I'm not really that concerned about the sticker on the back of that at this point. I realize I left it. So I decided, hey, maybe just go ahead and do a second bow and put it on the top. And I think it looks okay. Normally I wouldn't do this, but for some reason I was really, I really like this. It almost looks like it was hanging from the bow. What do you think? Would you have done something different or two bows too much? I don't know. Okay, so there's the gap that I was talking about. Just gonna add some hot glue and I'm gonna add some of these little um, clamps from the Dollar Tree. I love these clamps, I use them all the time. And see there, it's all sealed off. And then once it's had time to cool off, then you can take the clamps off. Now it won't slide up and down on that leg. I'm gonna remove this little clip here and I'm gonna show you a couple of different things that you can do with this sign. Okay, so we're gonna take off our sticker. You could put hot glue chalk on the back of it. You could take some type of a little lightweight cup and put on the back of it. Maybe teacher could put some chalk in there or maybe hide some candy in there, some treats in there. You could add some type of encouraging sticker on there. I'm gonna take this cutout of an apple and I'm just going to use a little bit of glue stick on the back and then just smooth it down as much as possible. And then here's where you could choose some type of an encouraging sticker. So start today with a smile. You could put that on there. And this just came from a planner book, a te the teacher's planner book. And I got mine at the thrift store, but you can get them at Michael's or Joanne or any place, Hobby Lobby, something like that. But I decided I wanted to use You Got This because teachers need encouragement. It's a hard job. I have a sister who is a teacher. Teaching is hard. Then I just put some little heart stickers on there too. And that's it for this project. What do you think about this? If you were a teacher, is this something that you would enjoy? It makes me smile when I look at it personally. It's very cheery. Okay, on to project number two, and we're going to do an apple wreath. So we're gonna take some little scraps of ribbon. If you've got the ribbon from Dollar Tree, you can use that. Trying to stick to the red and white or red and green theme. This is a little apple box that came from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use this and a paintbrush because we're gonna be doing some painting. I like a flat brush for my painting. And then we have some deco art paint. These I got from the thrift store. These are very inexpensive if you get them at um, the Dollar Tree or if you get them at Walmart. Then I'm gonna take some antiquing wax. These came from Target originally and I got them at Dirt Cheap. I think I paid like 10 cents for these last year. I'm going to take a thrift design, brown on one side and then it's got some scratchy white stuff where I peeled off a sticker before that was on there. And then I'm gonna just take this wreath. And this is a 14 inch wreath. I'm gonna measure it for you here. Doesn't really matter if you use the ones that look more wooden or whatever kind you wanna use. So we're gonna start by taking this apart because I actually need two apples. I have seen people take these apart by hand and apparently I'm very weak because I could not get these suckers apart. So I just took my little cutter here, went along the blue lines with it, tried to weaken 
the box a little bit, finally took a saw, scored lines in both sides next to the apple, and then pulled them apart. Man, that was a workout. But it was worth it because now I have two little apple pieces to work with. And I have some other scraps too. That's a lot for a dollar, isn't it? You get a lot out of that. I'm just going to sand it down because there is some glue marks here and a little splintering from the wood that was attached to it. Just a little bit to keep myself safe, but we're actually going to paint on the other side that is already smooth and ready to go. So there we are. We have two apples and they're mirrored. See how the leaves are? They're mirrored. So what I'm going to do is just smooth down my sides really well. I don't want any rough edges. I want this to look smooth. I want it to have a nice appearance once we get the paint on here. So it's just pretty much cleaning it up a little. Look at all the fallout from that sanding block. They don't normally do that, but I've had it for a while. So I have Christmas green, I have another type of green, and then I have Christmas red. The Christmas green is actually darker than this other green that I'm using, but I wanted a kind of a brighter green for the apple. Okay, so you've seen people paint, you know how to do this. Go all the way around it. Top, bottom, side to side. I just love a flat bristle brush, but you can use whatever you like on yours. And then I'm going to color one green and one is going to be red and I'm leaving a little spot up top because I want to be able to draw on where I want my leaf to be, which is what I'm doing now. And I don't want to get paint on that area. I don't want to add any red to that spot. Then I'm going to go to my sticker here and this is, these are wood stickers. And I'm going to color this one red. And then I'll grab that same green, paint my leaves that pretty green. I love to paint. And again, this is a, a flat brush, bristle brush. Love it. And then I'm going to use some of that antiquing wax to draw my stem. Back over to this apple once it's a little bit easier to move around because it's dried a little bit more. I'm just trying to make a little more detail how I want my leaf to be and where I want my stem to be. Now I'm using that same green there but on this apple I'm going to take that darker green which is the Christmas green so that you can see the difference between the apple and the green leaf. So that's what I've done there. Then I'm going to take the antiquing wax again and use that for my stems. I'm going to set them aside and let them dry. And while they are drying, we're going to work on the wreath. Choose what ribbon that you like. They are wired ribbons, but it doesn't matter for this part. Whatever you like that matches with your apples, go with that. This is so simple. We're just going to glue down this ribbon. Any part of this wreath, it doesn't matter where you start, but this will be the back though. So just know that you want these pieces on the back, not in the front. This is now the back of our wreath. Then you're just going to take that spool of ribbon and just wind it back and forth, round and around, leaving about the same amount of distance between each run of your ribbon. It'll give, her, it'll give it a nicer look. It'll look more intentional. Okay, so you're gonna do that all the way around. And then once you get back to the starting place, you're going to go ahead and trim it and glue it down. Again, making sure that you trim it and glue it down on the back side, which is the side that we're looking at right now, so you don't see any rough edges on your front. Right there. Just double check in to make sure my ribbons look good. I'm going to lay it back down and secure it. Always, always careful 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 of your fingertips protect them mine came from the dollar tree in the craft section and you can certainly get some of those for yourself now i'm just making sure that my ribbon is where i want it to be and there were a couple little pieces that were poking out and i'm just using my ribbons to 
secure those pieces of vine or what have you down. Now, part of my footage is missing, so I'm going to quickly run through what it is I'm doing. I'm trying to get a block so that I have a 3D form off of that tag. I'm getting an idea of what I need and I'm peeling off the enamel part of this from the wood. I have a red and white piece of, I think this is a placemat, and I'm just going to glue down on the back, just like this, to make a rectangle that is covered with fabric. Then I'll take my scissors and cut that out. Once I cut it out, I'm going to take my letters, I'm just showing you as an example with the numbers, and I'm going to put out apple picking, and I'm going to put my apple over there on the side. I'm showing you here that I'm lining these up just to make sure everything fits and looks nice together. Stay with me now because we got some missing footage we're working around. I'm going to take two of these stems that I got from the thrift store. I'm just going to bend the ends to carve along with the shape of a wreath. And this is a different wreath. Same concept. You're just going to stick those down in the weave of the wreath or underneath the ribbon. I'm not going to hot glue mine, but you can certainly do that. I'm going to use some floral wire to wire the top down to the wreath. You're not going to see that part. I'm going to add two little pieces of that greenery right into the top. And then we're going to start working on the bow next right in the middle of the top. I'm going to take some of that gingham ribbon and I'm going to start making some loops here. I've got about 10 inches of ribbon, so we're going to make big folded over loops, which are gonna give us about five on each. Gonna clip that in the middle and then I'm going to take my other and what I was using was the polka dot, but we're gonna use this just for an example. You're going to fold it over on itself so that you have two loops on each side. And then, so you can see here, there's two on that side, two on that side. Pinching it up in the middle and going to put the gingham right on top. Once you get those together, you can get your zip tie. Put it right around the middle and cinch it off. And you need to do it pretty tightly because you're going to be tugging at that bow to get those layers apart. It's a little more difficult when you have a smaller bow like this to get your layers to come apart, um, each of those little folds in the ribbon. So just be sure that you get that on there really tight. And then you can trim it off. We want the opening part to be in the back, then start fluffing out your bow. And this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have four little loops of each color or each style of ribbon on each side. Then you're going to cut off and dovetail your ends. You could have already cut it off if you know if you needed to do that. because this is just gonna be a short, stout little bow. You can definitely make a larger bow if that's something that interests you. If you think that that looks good, you can certainly do that. My videos are for inspiration. You don't have to use the same colors. You don't have to use the same anything, really. It's just to give you some idea of what you would like. So you're going to just pull that apart and then you're going to cut those ends up and I will let you know that also you are going to be missing the part where I glue the two layers of the sign together which is the fabric covered part of the sign to that metal tag sign and then wire it down to the wreath. And then add some little beads to the top of it and you'll see that in just a moment. So there we go. Now here's the finished project. This is the original footage. 
I just glued down the fabric part onto the metal sign with hot glue and I used some red beads to go on the top just in the pattern on top of little white um, sections of that plaid. And there is our finished wreath. Again, I apologize. I don't know what happened to the footage. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, project number three. This is our caramel apple sign. This is going to be either a sign that you can use just freestanding on any shelf anywhere in your house, or you can use it on your coffee bar. It's definitely too big for a tear tray. So we're gonna take some jute, a sign of your choice. It needs to be something thick that can sit securely on a shelf, some scraps of ribbon, and some red beads. So I'm gonna start by taking my sanding block and going around this wood cutout that I have. This um, was originally from Target and so was the block sign that's underneath it. I got it at Dirt Cheap. We're just gonna sand down the edges to give it more of a rustic look. Please excuse my children yelling in the background. They are home with me today. My husband is gone. He's in a meeting. Okay, so I wanna do the same thing with this one. I'm just gonna go around the edges and give it that white look, that worn look. As you know, my house has a kind of a rustic style, so I like to keep everything looking kind of vintagey and comfortable and worn. So we're gonna wipe all the dust off, make it nice and pretty and clean. Then we're gonna start layering this up. So in order for that glue to get good bite onto that wood, I'm gonna just take my sanding block and take some of that shiny paint off of there. Just running it back and forth. And now I have a better surface to put some glue on. I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue on each side, each of those high spots. And then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue. So we have long-term, strong hold, and a quick fix. Right there together. Try not to mix my glues up. Then I'm just gonna turn this over and center it down on the top of the block. You can find cutouts at Dollar Tree as well. I don't know if they have apples yet, but you can certainly um, look for those in the fall section. You might find something. I'm just using this piece of wood cut out underneath just to stabilize this until the glue is dry so that I continue to work on the project. Now I'm going to see what I want to do to embellish the top because I know I want to do something to this apple. Do I want to add some jute? Do I want to add some ribbon? How about we add a little bit of both? So I'm going to take this ribbon on the top and just hot glue it down. You can certainly make your ribbon long enough so that it goes all the way around, but I don't intend to have this sitting where you can see the backside. So just glue it down there, and then you can go ahead and layer up some jute or just use one solid color, whatever you choose to do. And I'm gonna put this around the middle. Hot glue it, then protect your fingers, and then trim it up, and start wrapping that around. I don't have a particular way I want this wrapped, I'm just going to go round and round, kind of crossing over here and there. Do whatever is best for you, whatever you like, and then we're going to finish it off with a little hot glue. To hold it in place. I love these little fingertip protectors. They work so well. And they did come from Dollar Tree. So now I've decided that I wanna make a little coordinating leaf to go over there on the top. So I'm just gonna trim this off, take the wire off, I'm gonna fold it in half, and then make sort of an oval shape. A leaf shape. So I'm just gonna do what in my mind would be a leaf shape. And then I'm going to glue that on the top. I'm just using a little bit of that extra glue that I already had on the brush. 
instead of using the hot glue. Look at this, isn't this cute? This is a thrifted item that I used and re refinished it and made it into a little spool holder so I can use it for my jute. Comes out nice and neat and I don't have to worry about it making a mess. Okay, so now we're going to make a tassel. So I'm going to go around my hand. I think I go around there about 10, 12 times. You'll have to count that. You may want to watch it back so that we can make a tassel. Now, I'm going to loop right through my loop, and I'm going to give that a few ties down, a few knots. Okay, then I'm going to pull it down and pinch it into the shape that it needs to be. I'm going to cut the length of my tassel, and I'm going to use another piece of jute to tie a knot about and half an inch down from where the top is. I'm going to tie that tightly. And then just begin to wrap it around and around and around. It's going to form the top or the head of that tassel. I'm going to glue it down. You could tie it off if you would rather do it that way. And then we're going to take our scissors through the loops and just cut those loops off. Be sure your glue is dry so you don't pull anything loose when you go to this part. You want to pull these down on the bottom, kind of brush them down with your fingers and then trim it off so that everything's nice and neat on the bottom. You can curve it or cut it straight across, whichever you prefer. We're going to embellish this so we're going to need a point to put beads on. A little hot glue, twist it on the end of that made us a little piece of a, I guess like a thread guide, and we're going to put it through there. These slide in here so easy this way, I really recommend this technique, and it's quicker than wrapping glue um, tape around it, excuse me. So I just want to see how long I want to make this, and I'm just going to add my beads to the way I like it, and then I'm going to tie it off so my beads don't slide around. I'm going to put a couple of knots in there to make sure that it doesn't slip back through the hole in the beads. You see how it still slips through with one? But if you tie it again and you slip another knot on top, see how it, that works? It's bigger than the hole and it won't slide out. So now we're going to go through the top of the apple right in that little hole. and then we're going to tie it down to the jute that's already there. Simply put a knot or two in there and that'll hold it. And if you prefer, you can just glue it on, whichever way. I'm giving you some options. Trim that off, and then I'm gonna trim off a little, I had a little extra there on my loop that needed to come off. So now I'm going to flare it out and see if this is how I like it. You can certainly leave it down. You can do it off to the side like this and then fix it with a little hot glue. Have it in the center or you can put it across the top. And I think that's how I like it. So I'm going to add some hot glue here and just let this embellish the top of my apple. It's a little bit of a different look, but I think it's pretty. What do you think? Now we're going to make just a little bow to go on the top, I'm going to use two strands of my jute, like this, and just make a very simple little bow to go on the top. There's enough going on with all the extra, the tassel and the polka dots that I don't need anything fancy, so I think this is the perfect little way to embellish it, and it'll cover up that hole. Trim it off the way you want it, add a little hot glue, and put it right down on top of where the hole is. And that is that. Now because we have the white in the sign below, I felt like it needed, you know, just a little more, little more white in the top of it. So I'm just going to trim off this little bow. We made it the same way, just with one strand, and then stick that down. And I think that that looks a little bit better. So what do you think about these three projects? 
Do you like any of these and will you be trying any of these? If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs and crafting, then I would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I promise to do my best to bring you affordable decor that you can make for your home. And as always, I like to leave you inspiration and bring you a little joy. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.